math machines functions in color controlling colors with linear and nonlinear functions the task is to design and test mathematical functions which produce dynamic displays of up to 16.7 million colors the software is the color functions program the optional hardware is the math machines RGB color mixer with the Vernier sensor DAC the hardware is optional since it's also possible to use the on-screen color display instead of the extra hardware. Although every color of a rainbow is real, the human eye has only three types of color receptors. Our eyes cannot, for example, see any difference between a true yellow and a mixture of red and green. TVs, computer monitors, digital cameras, electronic billboards, stage lighting, and other technologies create the appearance of millions of colors by combining just three, red, green, and blue, in different proportions. Human color perception is complex. One conceptual model for controlling color is that hue is determined by the relative strengths of the two dominant colors. Equal parts red and green, for example, will always appear yellow. The shade can vary from dark yellow to bright yellow depending on the total amount of light. The tint can be changed by adding a smaller amount of blue to produce faint yellow. Computer programs which control color commonly use integers to designate the intensity of each RGB color. In systems which display, display 16.7 million or 256 cubed colors, each integer can vary from 0 to 255. The color functions program uses percentages instead, where 0 means the color is not being emitted at all, and 100 means the emitter is operating its maximum possible value. Values more than 100% or less than zero are physically impossible or out of range. When we start the color functions program, one of the first things that may happen is the message asking if you have a DAC device connected. If the program found a sensor DAC or a MyDAC, it uh, will use it. Uh, if you don't have one and don't intend to use one, then you can simply say proceed without device. The program will wait patiently for instructions, expecting them in the form of uh, functions to be written into the blank boxes. Uh, for example, if we would like to make the color box change from its current black to red over the course of 10 seconds, we might put in an equation such as 10 times t, where we do have to use the time symbol for the t, uh, for the multiplication. Uh, if we now run what we can see both from the graph and from the color box is that the red color is becoming more and more intense uh, to make the display a little more meaningful we can set some different options uh, one thing is to set a timeout value which defaults to infinity but if we make that value 10 seconds one thing that's changed is that the graph now runs from 0 to 10 seconds and also the program will stop automatically after 10 seconds so if we run again, we see precisely the same change in the color box, but on the other hand, the graph's displaying this a little more effectively, and uh, the program does stop at the end of the 10 seconds. Uh, didn't quite have a chance to look at the graph at the end, and so we're going to set another run option to hold the final output and run it one more time, again with the exact same result for the color box. But at the end of those 10 seconds, uh, the program will stop and wait for us to say, OK, yes, we're now ready to, be to continue and to begin again. Uh, this is one way to make it change in 10 seconds. A lot of the benefit of looking at this then is to come up with some different questions, such as uh, how would we need to change the function if instead of making this occur in 10 seconds, for example, we wanted to make it change in 5 seconds, and it's possible to calculate the necessary rate to get to 100% in 5 seconds, which would be, I hope, 20 times t. And again, if we run this, the graph is reset to 5 seconds, the process is happening much more rapidly, and at the end of the five seconds, we are indeed at uh, the, the full maximum 100% value for the color box. Uh, continue with this and think about a few other possible things we might do. Uh, one of them is if we simultaneously want to do something with the green color as well as the red color, we can put a function in here 
and there are several possible ways to do this. Uh, one of them is simply to type in precisely the same equation and to say run and now what we have happening is that the red and the green are both changing gradually from 0 to 100 percent emission over the course of the five seconds and the color in the color box began with a very dark yellow but uh, gradually went up to a much more brilliant yellow. Uh, this could have been done in a variety of other ways uh, one of which is simply to say that we want the green value to replicate the red value <laughs> and if we do that we get precisely the same result. Uh, there are a variety of other ways in which you can do this. Uh, one of the valuable ways that, that looks at not only uh, explicit functions like these but also recursive functions is to say that we want to display initial values on this and we want to Display, to, to calculate each one of the new values uh, by using the previous value. And one thing that can help us with that is also to display dt, or the time that the computer program takes to go through each one of its cycles. And for this program it updates its calculation once every five hundredths of a second or twenty times per second. And if you think about that a little bit, that should mean that one of the possible ways to make red increase from 0 to 100 percent in 5 seconds is that each time it goes through the calculation 20 times per second it has to add one percentage point to the value and let's look just at the red by deleting the green here and if we run this one we did in fact get precisely the same result that we had before by doing it decre by doing it recursively. Uh, for the green let's try something a little bit different now. Uh, suppose what we want is for the red to increase from its minimum value to its maximum value but at the same time we want the green to decrease from its maximum value to its, to its uh, minimum. Uh, one way to do that would be with the explicit function where we put in something like 100 minus 20 times t and if we run that sure enough it starts out green the green is fading had a bit of a dark yellow in the middle there but by the time we get to the end of the five seconds the green has totally disappeared and the red has completely taken over uh, this would be the explicit function for the green. We could also do it uh, implicitly, I'm sorry, recursively by putting in something like green minus 1% since we want the green to drop by one percentage point during every uh, calculation cycle. But we have to also make an adjustment here to the initial value. Say that on the very first calculation it's going to begin with g equal to 100. And if we run this, again, we get the green dropping from 100 to 0 at the same, in the same time period when the red is increasing from 0 to 100. Uh, of course, we can also do similar things with the blue. And if we go back to one of our original equations with 20 times t, and I'm simply going to copy that equation with a control C, insert it here with control V, also insert it here with control V. The box is showing green because uh, my initial values are all zero with the exception of the green and, and before I actually start the run the program is going to show whatever colors combination is indicated here and in this case I want it to be zero or in fact maybe I don't even need those color displays anymore so let's go ahead and get rid of them uh, maybe clean up the display a little bit more but if I now make all three of these go to follow that same equation we can see that sure enough 
that is happening. Uh, on the other hand, the total display was not terribly interesting because by combining equal amounts of red, green, and blue, the result is white or some shade of gray in between. Uh, it's more interesting again if you put in some kind of a different function for one of them like for example having the red and the green increase simultaneously while the blue decreases and in that case what we get is a transition from blue to yellow. A more advanced challenge for students who've learned about uh, for example quadratic functions might be to create a parabola for the red where we would like to have the red start at zero to reach a maximum after let's say five seconds and then to return to zero after ten seconds. Since the cycle we're talking about there is ten seconds we need to change the time out to ten seconds. Delete the green and the blue functions and try to figure out what function will work for the red. Uh, Clever students might try something like negative t squared plus 10 times t and if we run that it did indeed start at 0. It uh, did indeed get back to 0 by 10. On the other hand it looks like uh, we've, we've had some kind of a failure here because it never did get up to the 100 percent. Wrong answers like this present very important teaching opportunities, uh, much more so than uh, getting a paper back with red marks on it a few days after the student's done the work uh, because they can immediately see that it didn't work and you, you still have uh, both the color display and the graph and the equation to talk to them about why it was wrong. Uh, if you rerun it might even notice that uh, at the peak of five seconds it's uh, reached just about 25. You can read from the numeric value uh, so that it's about a quarter as high as it should be and perhaps that suggests that uh, if we were to multiply the entire function by four we would still have the same zeros and would reach uh, four times the maximum. And if we run this, then it seems like we have in t uh, achieved the same parabola that we want. Uh, on the other hand, hey, we need to go a little bit farther in trying to understand this and uh, one of the possible challenges would, would simply be uh, how can we now make the green do just the opposite to start at 100 and drop down to zero halfway through and then get back up to, to 100 at the end. And one way of achieving that would be to have 100 minus r. But uh, a better step might be to say okay well then let's actually substitute for r what we have up here of negative 4 times t squared plus 40 times t and I think again if we run it we're going to see that same result. <clears throat> On the other hand this is a little less than elegant and it would probably be a better step to figure out how we can simplify this and put it into a more standard format and I think the way to do that would be to have 4 times t squared minus 40 times t plus 100. And if we got it right, I don't have to wait for the teacher to come back and tell me we got it right. I can see that it's right because we've achieved the result that we wanted to achieve.